This is Coding Math, Episode 48, Matrix Math, Part 1. There's a lot we could go into in terms of matrix math, but for the purposes of this channel, which is Coding Math, we're going to focus on the points that you'll probably use most often in programming. And this comes down almost exclusively to 2D transformation matrices used for translating, rotating, and scaling points and objects. 3D matrices are also useful in 3D programming, but that's a more specialized subject. Even limiting the subject just to 2D transformations, this video got pretty long, so I broke it into two parts. In this part, we'll just cover the theory, and in part two, we'll use what we learned in code. We could create a matrix object here, but honestly, most people would not find much use for it in JavaScript. So this particular video will just be to give you the understanding of the subject. And next time, we'll see the real world practical use of it. Okay, a matrix is simply a table of values. A programming analogy would be an array. In fact, a matrix is sometimes defined as an array of values. Like a programming array, a matrix can hold a single row or column of values, or it can be a rectangular grid. But unlike JavaScript, the entire matrix is enclosed in one large set of brackets. When we talk about the size of a matrix, we usually say the number of rows by the number of columns. This matrix here has two rows and three columns, so it's a two by three matrix. Matrices are used for all sorts of mathematical purposes, but in general everyday computing, they're most often used for 2D and 3D transformations. Transformations are applied to 2D and 3D points. So we start out with an XY point, say four or five. We can represent this point with this matrix. The X goes in the first row, first column. The Y goes in the second row, first column. And you're probably asking why we don't make it like this with just a single row of two columns. But we could, and we could arrange everything to make that work just fine. But most of the time, you're gonna see it the first way. Next, let's look at what you can do with matrices. Well, you can add them together. Say I have another point, two, three. This can also become a matrix. Now, it's a little strange to talk about adding two points together. But if this second point represented a velocity, for example, then you could add that velocity to the first point. Basically, we're talking about vector math here, which we covered in several earlier videos. Adding two matrices is easy. There's just one requirement, that both matrices have the same number of rows and columns. Well, we've got that covered. So we just add each element of one matrix to the corresponding element of the other matrix. This gives us a new matrix with the result of 6, 8, which is the result of adding these two quote-unquote points together. If you had a larger matrix with multiple columns, you just do the same thing to each element. And subtraction would work the same way. Just subtract each corresponding element. In terms of 2D transformations, this is actually a translation. We've just translated the original point by the amount in the second matrix. Now, multiplication gets a lot more complex. First of all, there are two types of matrix multiplication. You can multiply a matrix by a matrix, or you can multiply a matrix by a single value. That single value is known as a scalar number. Scalar multiplication is very easy. Just multiply every element in the matrix by that scalar and put that into a new matrix. We start with a matrix three, four, and a scalar of two. Two times three is six, and two times four is eight, so we get a new matrix six, eight. Again, if you had more rows or columns, you just do the same thing for each element and wind up with a new matrix exactly the same size as the old one. Note that in terms of our point, it has scaled this point by two, hence the name scalar. Easy enough. Now on to multiplying a matrix by another matrix. There's a very strange seeming requirement for multiplying matrices. The number of columns in the first matrix must be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. So if I have a two by three matrix here, that has three columns. I can multiply it by any other matrix that has three rows. What you do is work across the first row in this matrix and multiply each element by the corresponding row of the first column in this matrix, and then add those products up. Okay, that's a mouthful, so let's look at what we have. One times two equals two, and two times three equals six, and three times four equals 12. Add those up, that's 20. Then you take one, two, and three times four, five, and six. That gives you four, 10, and 18, or 32, which goes here. 
Then you do the same thing for 4, 5, and 6 times 2, 3, and 4. You get 8, 15, and 24. So 47 goes here. And then finally, 4, 5, 6 against 4, 5, 6 for 16, 25, and 36. Add those up and put 77 here. And that's our final matrix. So what does all that mean? Well, it depends what the matrices themselves meant. That was just a random example to show you the mechanics. Probably won't be doing anything quite so complicated as that. But let's go back to scaling. In the example we did with a scalar value, we multiplied all the elements by a single scalar value. But what if we wanted to scale differently on the x and y axes? Well, we could set up a scaling matrix like this. Sx, 0, 0, Sy. Sx is the scale value on the x-axis, Sy on the y-axis. So say we want to scale by 2 on the x-axis and 3 on the y-axis. We'd have 2, 0, 0, 3. And we can multiply this by a point, which is, say, 4, 5. Note that the scaling matrix is first. That way we have two columns in the first matrix and two rows in the second, so we're good. We say 2 times 4 plus 0 times 5 equals 8, and that goes here. Then 0 times 4 plus 3 times 5 equals 15, so 15 goes here. And that's the result of scaling the point by 2 on the x-axis and 3 on the y. A bit more complex than you might originally do by yourself, but it works out pretty well when we add in other transformations. Now, on to rotation. If you remember way back to the video we did on coordinate rotations, to rotate an xy point by a given angle a, you'd use a pair of formulas like this. x prime equals x times cosine of a plus y times sine of a. And y prime equals y times the cosine of a, minus x times the sine of a. And remember, this order is specifically for canvas, which is flipped on the y-axis compared to usual Cartesian coordinates. Well, we can matricize this pretty easily. We make a rotation matrix like so. Cosine a, sine a, minus sine a, cosine a. Again, this is specific to canvas with its flipped y-axis. Then we have a point like x, y. Multiplying across the first row, we get cosine a times x plus sine a times y. Then the second row, we get minus sine a times x plus cosine a times y. Those are the x and y coordinates for the rotated point. And what do you know, other than a few terms being swapped around, they're identical to that original formula. So now we have a way to do all three transformations with matrices. Translation, scaling, and rotation. But it's a bit out of joint. The scaling and rotation are done by multiplying a 2 by 2 matrix by the point, while the translation is done by adding a 2 by 1 matrix. Well, we can actually make it so you do all of the transformations with a single matrix multiplication. First, let's do scaling plus translation. What we do is to create a 2 by 3 matrix that looks like this. Now you'll often see this as a 3x3 three three matrix written like so, but that last row is totally unnecessary for our needs. Again, Sx and Sy are the scale factors on the x and y axes, and Tx and Ty are the amounts to translate on each axis. And you give your point an extra row set to 1. We do this because, remember, the first matrix needs to have the same number of columns as the second matrix has rows. Since the first matrix has three columns, the point needs to have three rows. It seems arbitrary, but it's related to that third row of the scaling matrix that I just threw away. That third row is useful in some applications, but for 2D transformations, we don't need it. So we do the multiplication, sx times x plus 0 times y plus tx times 1. This can be simplified to sx times x plus tx, which makes sense. We scale it, then translate it. The second row is 0 times x plus sy times y plus ty times 1. Again, this becomes sy times y plus ty. Perfect. 
and you're left with a matrix that has x scaled by the x scale factor plus the translation, and y scaled by the y scale factor plus the translation. That should make sense. Now let's do rotation. We get a matrix like this. And your point matrix like this again. Multiplying the first row, cosine a times x plus sine a times y plus tx times 1. And the second row, minus sine a times x plus cosine a times y plus ty times 1. I've ignored the times 1 part and we're left with the rotation formula plus translation. Now we can scale and translate, or rotate and translate, with a single matrix. What about scaling and rotating at the same time? Well, that's a bit more complex, and we'll get to that later in the next video. So now we have a 2 by 3 matrix that we can do a lot with, but how do we use it? Well, for that, you're going to have to wait until the next episode. Unless you're viewing this in the future, in that case, you can just watch the episode right now. Magical.